I know I've been on a Divorce Diaries rant for quite a while now, but I just want to take a break to just remind you about this podcast and how I record it. If you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, it's the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need in one place. Let me explain. Anchor has tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. When hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast everywhere. Seriously. On Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. And best of all, Anchor is totally free. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Again, that's anchor.fm to get started or download the Anchor app. Welcome to the Divorce Diaries Podcast. One man's anonymous and live account of if he should get a divorce or stay married. He's been cheated on and he's cheated. Protecting the innocent with changed voice patterns, the omission of names, ages, and genders. His authentic journey and account of the daily events of his marriage are helping him sort out his feelings and not get lost in the ups or the downs. New episodes are released daily. Welcome to the Divorce Diaries podcast. Entire seasons are released on Patreon weeks before anywhere else at Divorce Diaries podcast Patreon page. Link in description. Now for today's episode. I know that I need to get a divorce. Um, I can definitely tell you that I don't want to, but I I know that I need to. Um, yesterday was my wife's birthday, and um, it was good. I, I got her her um, favorite cupcake, and I had some wine with her, and watched an old movie with her and we just spent time together um, at my place um, for her birthday. She left work early and just kind of hung out with me for a while and she went back and, and um, I just really wanted her to have a special day because she's, she's done really good things for me for my birthday and helped me, um, you know, have great experiences. I mean, there's fly fishing and kayaking and I, I, they're, my, my birthdays and Father's Days are kind of um, smushing together a little bit. I don't remember all the great events, but she definitely planned great events for me where I had great fun. And I definitely do want to return that favor. Um, but right now I am getting a COVID test and uh, for a concert that I'm going to attend with um, my family for my youngest birthday. And I am one, two, three, four, five, six cars behind uh, my wife and kids right now because there's distance between us. And uh, the distance is there because um, of a lot of things that I did. I've said some inappropriate things, cast my kids in one light to, to another kid. I've involved them in conflicts they shouldn't have been involved in. I just haven't been the best um, person and father and damn like out and out not good communicator um, and just disrespectful to people I have. Now, back to why I still know that I need to get a divorce from her. Um, a lot of the mud on my shoes is because I didn't know the field was wet. You, you ever been in that situation where you're kind of walking across um, a field and everything seems good. Everything seems dry, I guess. But then you didn't realize that one part of the field is a little bit lower than the next part. And it rained and that first part of the field that was a little bit uphill that you didn't realize was sort of uphill. It was a divot there. And you had this, um, you stepped in the ground, just squished under your feet, just squished. And your shoes are now muddy. And it maybe it was so it was it was a little bit deep, soaked through to your socks. And you're like, damn it. You had sort of damp shoes walking through that higher part of the grass, but now you're walking into something and you didn't really account for that. You couldn't see it coming. So now you did kind of track some mud in the house then there's more that has to be cleaned up. So the mess would have been the mess, but the mess is somehow more severe now because of an additional thing that happened being the field was muddy and you didn't, you couldn't 
tell that it was because otherwise you would have walked around it. So I'm going to say the two situations that really help me understand why we need to get a divorce because we're just not, we're not on the same page. And I'm not even going to say that my wife is right or wrong or I am right or wrong about this, but I don't agree with this, um, the way that these things sort of happen. So my youngest came to me and she talked to me about, um, mom said you guys broke up in high school and you got another girlfriend or mom said you had another girlfriend and cheated on her in high school, which is really, we, we, we broke up and that doesn't matter that, that the part, that part doesn't matter. What matters is I'm talking to my under 10 year old kid about a breakup that my wife had or or potential things that happened with me and another person when my wife and I were in high school. And the person that told her was her older sibling. The person that told her was my wife. I don't think it's appropriate to put an entire relationship on trial to a child. And that child told the younger child and the younger child came and asked me basically like that. You're such a piece of shit. How could you have another girlfriend? And I was at a a crossroads where I could say, well, that's not really what happened, but I didn't want to pull my kid into that because I would have to say everything that my wife did do during that time. I would have to drag her name through the mud. I would have to abuse my kid or my kids with the truth of some of the what do you call them, like misgivings of both their parents, the flaws of both their parents, the personal perspectives of both their parents, the sordid past from both their parents. And that just really makes things difficult. And kids shouldn't, I don't think. Kids shouldn't know these things. They shouldn't be involved in these things. Kids shouldn't need to be forced to be judger and juror or executioner of their parents' decisions because none of us are perfect. Let's be honest. There are people that had affairs during their marriage. There are people that are having affairs in their marriages. There are people that, that cheated on their significant other before they got married. There are people that didn't. There are people that cheated once. There's people that cheated many times. There are people that emptied bank accounts. There are people that have committed crimes. There are people that have physically hurt each other before, during, after marriages. There's um, everything that's happened. The, every relationship goes through its own forms of ups and downs, healthy and unhealthy behaviors and traumatic people, which most of us are, traumatized people, which most of us are, usually in some form or another, do traumatize others. And I know that we need to get a divorce because I am of the mindset that I don't know is right or wrong, but I don't involve the children in that business. And if I did involve the children, I would, I quickly sort of, once I realized the pain that it caused, because it really just causes pain, Um, them knowing those things, especially without the nuanced details and needing to then pick like, oh, that means mom's more of a piece of shit than dad or dad's more of a piece of shit than mom. It puts kids in a position to choose between parents. And I don't think that kids should ever be in a place where they should choose between parents, be forced to do that by one parent or another. So my form of quote unquote, taking the high road is I'm like, you know, I'm just not going to, I'm not going to add to this because I don't want the kids to find out things their mom did and then either still choose to spend most of their time around mom because that's another choice that they'll have to make which I think will be a bad one or choose to pivot and say well I would I now no longer like mom because of what you told me mom did which I think would also be a very bad thing 
I don't want children to have to choose between parents. They should never be brought in the middle. And my wife talked to, and I don't know all of what she's told one of my kids, but from her perspective, the things that happened and you know how we all tell stories. Um, For the most part, people tell stories from their perspective and most of the time we are victims in our minds because we think that our thoughts are righteous and our actions are also righteous and we you know we we were good and our bad behavior is somehow justifiable um i'm not that person just a little insight into me i'm not that person i feel that I am a good person that has done bad things. I am not the best communicator most of the time. I'm getting better thanks to therapy, directness, um, and noticing my initial reaction to just be a defensive person. I'll always defend. And defending will lead to justification. Justification will lead to more defense. And justification can maybe even lead to avoidance. And all of those things are the absolute worst ingredients when you're trying to solve a problem or help a situation. If, I mean, imagine if a a janitor was offended and felt the need to defend themselves. If someone came by and said, Hey, Fred, um, I think you forgot to, uh, oh, paper towels are empty on the, in the restroom on level two. Fred could say, no, they're not. I filled them yesterday. That, that, that doesn't, that bathroom usually doesn't, uh, need a refill on paper towels for three days. It's the least trafficked floor and it's, I filled it on Monday and now today's Tuesday. I know it's good. Fred, I'm just, Fred, I'm just telling you what I saw. I mean, could you go up and take a look? I mean, maybe, maybe I'll go up and take a look, but I'm not sure when, because I mean, I, I have a schedule and I know what level two is. I mean, you were probably on another floor. Fred's redirecting and and I've done this and I still do it. I have to be really careful that I don't do it because it's my reaction to defend myself, defend my position. I need to defend it with logic. I need to defend it with perspective. I need to defend it with reason. And that's just the bullshit that I do. And I've seen it done with other people and it happens with me with other people. So when when I realized that I was not special, I was not a special bear. um, I'm not a, special case where I'm better than anyone else or anyone else is better or worse than me. We just are who we are. And I very much want to stop doing that. So Fred then takes his, um, later that evening before he leaves, because Fred's been simmering all day. And by the way, the person that came and talked to him was his, uh, superior. That was Fred's superior. And, At the end of that day, Fred knows that he's going to go and check so he can send a scathing email to his superiors and he's going to CC the rest of the team to let them know, hey, just to let you guys know, I was right. The bathroom, it was not out of paper towels. It seems like it's been proven that, but I went and checked the other bathrooms and I found out it was actually the one on level four that was that was out, which I refilled that. And if you're going to reach out to me, Make sure you have your bathrooms right. He was gonna. He was planning on dressing down the boss. Except Fred went up there to level two, and Fred noticed as he passed the conference room that the door was open and the trash was full, and someone left a PowerPoint slide deck on the table in printed form with today's date on it to let him know that. Yes, um, there was going to be an annual, the annual um, meeting of the advisors. They were meeting in that room and they met that day between 10 
and four after he refilled all of the paper towels on that that Monday before. So had Fred remembered or knew that the conference was going to be held in that room, he could have adjusted his schedule, made more frequent trips, monitored those, and it and it um and for another thing, he wouldn't have had to defend himself to his superior. So the next morning, Fred's called into the office of a superior and the superior reminds Fred of the last dozen times that he's mentioned something to him and he has rebuffed, disrespected, called out, defended, and aggressively responded to his superior about everything that happened. And Fred just has a habit of doing this like I do, like I did. I feel like I'm a recovering um, I'm, a, I'm a recovering narcissist because no, 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 I'm not. I'm not the blame. I'm not the problem. Not me, not me, not me. So. And after. The meeting Fred has with his superiors, superior says, Fred, I'm going to have to let you go. I need people on the team that are team players. I need people on the team that are going to be open. And I, I, I can't have this every time I'm. You know, every time I talk to you, Fred, it's a, it's a battle and I'm sick of fighting, Fred. So I got to let you go. So Fred also could take that and Fred could say, shit, I really fucked up. I really stepped in it. I really got to get a handle on it. And he could maybe even say that to his boss right then. Boss, I'm sorry. I'm really like, I don't know what's going on with me. I defended myself. I didn't even know about the conference up there. I I got nothing to say, but you deserve better than that, boss. And uh, I'm sorry. And I, I don't even think about how I'm making your life harder doing this. I, I just didn't even realize. I'm sorry, boss. I, hopefully you can give me another chance. I understand if you don't, but I hope you can give me another chance. And then Fred could just make a pivot like I had to, or you have a total paradigm shift. Do you understand that, man, I am kind of a dick. I am kind of an asshole. I don't like that about myself. What am I doing here? But, um, yeah, it's back to the divorce. I was away from our story from Fred, the janitor. My wife talks to our children about me and things that I wouldn't talk about with them. She talks about them. So it just, now I, not only do I have my asinine defense mechanism that I typically fall into that I need to deal with and I need to make my apologies and make my amends like Fred the janitor, I have these new things, the wet field, the soggy divot of mud that I didn't see coming is what my wife says to the kids. And um, I remember our oldest, um, when he was in school, he, um, he began to consume marijuana at a, at a young age and it was really hurting him, I think. I think it was hurting him. But, and I'm saying think purposefully because I'm not really sure if it was or if it wasn't hurting him. I think that it was, but I just didn't want him smoking. There was a lot of lies around that. And he was just, he, was, he wasn't being genuine about everything. He was just continue to lie and lie and lie. Um, sorry about that. I just uh, did my COVID paperwork. Like I said, I'm here doing this thing. So there was a lot of lies around the marijuana. And um, my wife and I had two decrees. You know, she her decree was, you know, you need to, if to, in order to live in this house, this is when we were still living together, you need to go to school. And I wasn't on board with that. Um, I was open to him maybe taking a year off, figuring out what he wanted to do. I mean, I know the gap year thing isn't really the best thing, but I felt like he really wasn't going to commit himself. But 
whatever. I said, yep. Mom says for you to live here, you need to go to school. That's criteria one. And my criteria is in order to be here, you need to, um, you can't smoke weed. And I was like, I don't know what it's doing to your mind. And I'm not a smoker. I've never indulged. I never consumed. So I, I didn't, I didn't know how it was affecting him. All I know is he was young. He didn't seem like he was performing well. He was lying a lot. There was a lot of toxicity around it. And I didn't know how it was affecting his brain. I just didn't want him doing it. And in that moment, my wife didn't say anything, but I'd come to find that my wife told my son behind my back afterward, you know, you can smoke. I know what dad said, but, you know, you can smoke and just, you know, don't do it in an, in an unsafe place. Just do it around the house. And I found out about it and just yelled at him so much. And he never told me that mom was the one that told him that he could do it because I would have immediately turned down my vitriol toward him and I would have directed it to her or I would have paused and said, wow, I can't be mad at him because she went behind my back and told him that. And the roughest part about that and why we need to get a divorce is because even though she went behind my back, she didn't come out and tell me, you know what? I'm sorry, I should not have gone behind your back. I should have told you that I told him to do that. Because when I tell you, I yelled at him so often when I found out he was still doing it and he just never said, mom told me to. And that just continued to cause a rift between he and I. He continued to be more and more upset with me. I continued to be more upset with him. I thought he was disobeying me. He just wanted to do what he wanted to do. And it was, our relationship got so much more toxic. And that was the mud in the middle of the field I didn't know was there. I didn't know that my feet were going to get that wet. I wouldn't have worn those shoes. I wouldn't have come at my son that way. And my wife is just, you know, she's that type of person. She's the type of person that talks about me behind my back to my children. She's the type of person that tells me that I should do. She, she, she tells me some, one thing and then she does another or she hides things and she's secretive and she's deceptive and she's deceitful in that way. Because so I never really know. I don't know. I don't know if what we say and agree upon she's good with. I don't know if what we say and agree upon is something that she will hold fast to. I have no idea. So that's why I know that we need to get a divorce because I don't trust my wife, but I don't trust her because I know I can't trust her. And that's a different, that's a different thing. Cause even when I say like, man, I can't trust my wife that, or you can't trust this person. It just, it almost, creates an opportunity for healing being able to trust but like being able to trust again like maybe there's an opportunity for repair but then like Fred when he got fired he was getting fired because of the repeated and habitual state of things that he caused whenever his supervisor felt he needed to talk to him he didn't want to not work with Fred anymore because Fred wasn't a good employee or Fred wasn't diligent or Fred wasn't thorough. It's just like Fred, I know that every time I talk to you, you're going to fight me. I, and that's the word, the no, I know Fred, every time I say something to you that I may need you to check on it again or that because I'm sure, I, I feel that I'm sure of what I saw, Fred, and I'm open to you coming back to me and telling you that I was wrong, but I'm your superior and we're also partners, Fred. I say I see something, you're supposed to go and check on it. That is what, how we're supposed to do things. But Fred, I know that when I talk to you, it will be a battle. So we need to part ways. And for me and my wife, I know that it will be a struggle 
in a fight in the same way, except it's with honesty and truth. I know that when my wife is saying something to me, she's not telling me 100% of the story. I know when she's talking to me, she may not even be telling me any of it. I know that she may change things. And I know that she'll let me go into a situation knowing the field is wet with the wrong shoes and she'll let me step right in the puddle. Now that I know that about her, how can we stay married? How can we be anything? Wow. That was the Divorce Diaries podcast. The Daily Saga will continue tomorrow. The full season's episodes are on Patreon now. Subscribe for early access. Click the Patreon link in the description. Hopefully, these entries help our anonymous recorder as a form of his own personal therapy. That's his hope and his intention. Will these recordings of life's curveballs lead this family to the best resolution in the end? We'll keep listening. New episodes are released daily on all podcast players, but all episodes are available on Patreon at Divorce Diaries Podcast Patreon page. Until next time.